Hey, it's Christmas time, or St. Nicholas Day, Festivus, National Hard Candy Day, Dewey Decimal System, whatever holiday you might personally celebrate in December, you're probably thinking about gifts for yourself or someone else. And chances are, if you're watching this, you either know a videographer, cinematographer, or you are one. Maybe someone has asked you for a list of relatively inexpensive ideas. On this point, I've got you covered because here are six great devices that I actually use on almost every shoot right now. All of these items live in my camera bag. They're not all flashy, but they all deliver when it comes to things that are high value for little cash. Now, there are a lot of useful products under 50 bucks, from polarizers and ND filters to mini tripods, cables, and adapters. I've decided to go with six that are relatively uncommon and not quite as well known. I've included links below to various sites where you can buy them because some of these items are harder to find. And I encourage people to shop around, especially outside of Amazon.com, who I personally hate and almost never use. I canceled my Prime account two years ago, and what I've learned since is that there's almost always a better deal somewhere else. They're not the cheapest or the most ethical or the most satisfying. Especially if you don't need it in two days, I encourage folks to check out B&H Photo, uh, uh, eBay, Adorama, and even AliExpress if you're not in a hurry. None of the links below are affiliates, so don't get anything if you buy, and none of the products are sponsored or loaners. I paid cash for mine. So here we go. The newer autofocus macro tube set. This pair is truly fantastic. I've had them for about four months now and they've honestly changed the way I conceptualize my videos. It's because it's so easy to get a super close up. I've had lenses with macro ability before, but they don't compare. First, this pair gives you three different macro magnifications. You can use them individually or stacked. You can put them on any lens, giving you added control over the magnification process. The autofocus function is 10 10 times easier than manually adjusting distance in order to focus. You still have to do that because their focusing distance is both close and very shallow, but you're not guessing in quarter inch increments anymore. You're working in inches, and you can adjust your aperture to control the depth of field. Newer makes them for Sony, Nikon, and Canon, and possibly Fuji, I can't remember. The Sony version fits snugly and the autofocus is accurate. Inexpensive lens adapters can be worrisome in terms of getting stuck or damaging connectors, and I'm very careful when attaching it to my lenses and camera. But in truth, they really haven't given me any cause for concern. Honestly, they're the best piece of $30 gear I own, and I don't really have anything negative to say about them. The Monitor app. My apologies to Nikon, Fuji, and Canon shooters. This is a Sony-only app, and for the moment, its best value is with Android users. With iOS, you can only connect via your camera's Wi-Fi, and most cameras don't have a strong enough signal for a completely smooth and stutter-free connection. I have an Android phone, and I use it in both the Wi-Fi mode when I need a quick check of what's on screen, and attached via a USB cable when I want a full monitor. The USB connection on my A1 is immaculate. It's a wired monitor. So what does it do? Well, it allows you to use your phone as a monitor, which isn't anything new, but it also connects via USB rather than HDMI, which is somehow more convenient. And it's a powerful tool. The free version gives you control over the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, and white balance. And the paid version is just $19, but it gives you a wired connection, scopes, false color, focus pulling, touch to focus, LUTs, de-squeeze, and pretty much everything a professional monitor can do. Most phones are 1080p resolution, which is plenty for their screen size, and most phones are double the size of your camera's LCD, making this a great tool for run and gun situations when you don't want to carry or attach a larger monitor. You should check their camera compatibility list because it tends to only have full capabilities with some Sony cameras produced in the last few years. But if you have a Sony camera, download the free version to check the compatibility and give it a trial run as a simple monitor. In the paid version, you get all the scopes, bells, and whistles, and it's worth it. Small LED lights are ubiquitous, and you probably already have a handful that you never use. I do. I've pretty much decided that any new small LED I buy will have to be RGB. 
but there's a little fella I've had for years that now goes with me on every single shoot. And I use it on almost every YouTube video I do. I had to swap it out for this review. And that is the $35 ICANN ILED MS Micro Spot on camera light. Now it doesn't look like it would be especially useful, but it focuses the light in a way that the ubiquitous LED panels just can't. It's just four watts, but it has a 30 degree beam angle and these cute little barn doors to cut the light even further. I actually wish there were three of them. Uh, it's got a diffuser that's pretty much useless. I guess I could probably paint that black and a built-in tungsten diffuser. I've had it for five years and I use it constantly as a hair light, even on larger shoots, or as an accent light in the background, or as a product light for low light black on black images. You can pan it across the product like an iPhone commercial. The color quality is, but it's not a key light or a fill light. I'm really hesitant to recommend any tiny light because there's always one that's cheaper or more powerful for the money, but there are a few that can do what this one can do. Tilta Seamless Follow Focus Gears. These are great for the videographer who pulls focus by hand. If you use a wireless system or a wheel, seamless follow focus gears are convenient and good looking. And at two bucks a pop, they're more like stocking stuffers. Some manufacturers sell these for 35 bucks, but Tilta and B&H have got you covered. For $2, the trick is getting the right size. Tilta has a partial list of lenses and you may find yours on that list. If not, pull out a cloth or paper ruler or buy a couple of different sizes to see what fits. At two bucks, it's not unreasonable to buy a couple to find the one that fits your lens. What you need to remember is that the ring size isn't the same as your lens thread or cap. It's probably three to five millimeters larger. Are there cons to this? Well, not really. They do what they're supposed to do, though you may have to add a bit of gaffer tape to the inside of the rim if your lens is an in-between size. You can buy them direct from Tilta, but you'll get cheaper shipping at B&H. Okay, this one doesn't have much flair or pizzazz, but if you don't own one, it can be really helpful. And that's your basic cable organizer. This unassuming little fella ensures that I always have the right cable on set. I never forget to pack it because they all live right here. And they're organized, so I can find them without digging through the bottom of my bag trying to pick out which black cable is the right black cable. For nine bucks, it seriously enhances my workflow and reduces annoyances. Enough said. My last one is a little bit niche, but before I jump in, I'd like to invite you to subscribe. It helps me make content, plain and simple, and it lets me know what you find interesting or helpful. Or hit the like button if you think other folks might find this helpful, because that's exactly what happens. When you like a video, YouTube puts it in front of the feed of more people. My number six gift item depends a bit on your system and your approach. It's the X5. P1 Rechargeable Portable Phantom Power Supply. This is for shooters who want a small phantom power supply unit for most likely their shotgun mics. Though of course it will power any XLR mic and it works. It's silent. There's no electrical noise pollution being introduced into your audio signal. And it lasts for freaking ever, like 30 hours. So you can use it on multiple shoots without having to recharge. It can output both 12 and 48 volts, and I found it to be useful in creating a relatively compact wireless solution using a Rode Wireless Go. I can now make my best mics wireless. It's XLR in to XLR out, so you need a Rode XLR to 35 millimeter cable, and of course a, a Rode or a Hollyland or other micro wireless mic system to make it work. The X5, or however it's pronounced, is so small and light that it doesn't add much bulk to your existing mic. Now, wireless mic systems never sound as full-bodied as cabled systems, but there are times when you need a shotgun for sound isolation and a wireless system for mobility, or to hide your mic somewhere, or to preserve the battery on your recorder, or to use a recorder that doesn't have phantom power, like going direct into your camera for faster editing. There's actually a number of scenarios where it's useful. The X5 comes in at 50 bucks, which is far cheaper than a dedicated wireless XLR transmitter, and it will connect to your existing setup. The cons? Well, I did have to glue the rubber feet back on, so I guess they kind of missed the quality control on that bit. But it's all metal and otherwise well-made and fairly sturdy, considering that there's an internal battery. Keep in mind that you'll need to chip out another 20 bucks for the proper cable adapter. That takes a little bit of the glow off, but it'll come back the moment you need a wireless shotgun on set. 
For my next video, I'm reviewing a device that I guarantee you have never heard of. It's a bit of tech that can make both the business side of your production easier and expand your post-production creativity in the edit. It will give you a subtle, personal touch to your videos that no one, and I mean absolutely no one else, can recreate exactly the same way. You've actually seen it in action in my last two videos. It's super simple to use, but it takes some explaining to describe. So hit the subscribe button and be there when it drops. And if you have a product under 50 bucks that's been invaluable to you as a creator, leave it in the comments below. It helps us all out.